Yeah. So, so, uh, so my question is very. I won't take up too much time off you guys. So, I am actually in medical school right now, and one of my friends, she is on the path to Islam, mashallah. So she's very close, but some of the arguments that she gives me, I can't refute her. You know, it just makes me think as well. So I've done. So I gave her uh, brother Hijab's videos where he talks about uh, the existence of God. I gave your videos about evolution and whatnot. So she's like, so she's eliminated all the other religions. But when it comes to this particular topic, she's like, I, I don't know where to go from that. So it's basically this. Um, so she says that evolution makes sense up until the point of human beings. So the reason why, and I, I gave her a link to your video where you said that it doesn't make sense for us to have the intelligence level of uh, being able to do calculus and going to the moon. I, I think it was a video that you posted a couple of years ago. Yeah. She said that, so why can't we evolve intelligence? after we develop from apes so after we so basically intelligence is adaptability to our environment and we sure. had to develop intelligence to be able to survive in the environment that we are right now sure so just before i answer your question brother hamza the first thing i want to say is even though i'm going to give you an answer to this question this answer is not really that relevant if the sisters come that close right because what it is is that evolution whether someone believes in it or do not, they do not believe in it, it does not undermine God's existence or the argument for the miraculous nature of the Quran. So she may get these questions or other questions shaitan may put in her mind, but that shouldn't stop her from accepting Islam if she accepts the existence of God and the Quranic miracles and the miracles of the Prophet ﷺ. And be careful not to have debates with her because sometimes it's better to say, okay, even if these questions can't be answered, do you agree with these points, the basic uh, structure of the Gorab, God's existence, oneness, revelation and prophethood, and then just get the person to accept Islam, inshallah, and then afterwards other questions can be dealt with. Now on this point, the first point to know, uh, to know this is not an idea that was original to me, right? And I, I, and I always try and be careful uh, uh, not to attribute these ideas to myself. Almost everything you will get on my channel is not my ideas. Okay, this is very important. Now, this idea that you just articulated is the idea of the first, the first murtad from Darwinism, the first apostate from Darwinism, who was the co-conspirator, uh, if you like, with Darwin in terms of Darwinian evolution, whose name was Alfred Russell Wallace. So Alfred Russell Wallace, when Darwin presented his ideas in 1858 at the Royal Society in London, Alfred Russell Wallace came up with the idea of evolution by natural selection, independent to Darwin. And when they discovered each other, Darwin being the gentleman, basically said, let's publish our theory together, which is why in the Victorian era, it was known as Darwin and Wallace's theory of evolution. Now, Wallace basically realized that at the time, the British Empire, they had their different colonies. They had access to the supposed savage people, like the Fujian people of South America. And the Fujian people that he, know, he knew of, they were brought to the UK. And when these Fujian people were, were brought to the UK, they could, in Alfred Russell Wallace's assessment, be as good as the English gentlemen if they were to be educated at Cambridge. So the first doubt that he had in his mind is if the human mind evolved via natural selection according to the local environmental conditions, then why would the Fujian people have the ability to do calculus, mathematics, and all various types of higher levels of thinking, which is not needed for your survival and reproduction in the areas, the primitive places that they were from. So that was the first doubt which eventually made him uh, come out and publicly say that he did not believe evolution by natural selection could explain the human mind and human behavior and human beings, basically, right, in a nutshell. Uh, I don't remember exactly uh, the... the uh, the, the parts of his book, but you can read his book, uh, his books um, in, in terms of when he starts uh, coming up with these uh, doubts. Um, Darwin then obviously said to him, don't murder our child because now you're going against the theory. So this idea is widespread. It's not just Alfred Russell Wallace. Many others have actually commented on this. And her point, why couldn't intelligence just keep on increasing once it developed? Well, the point is there has to be selective pressure for intelligence to increase. So, for example, one of the things that Darwin speaks about and one of the things that even international relations scholars who are dealing with 
uh, Darwinism uh, and they're trying to incorporate it in their field, they're talking about is the arms race. So there's evolutionary arms races that supposedly happen in nature where one species develops a trait and therefore to compete, the other species develops another trait and they have this arms race full intelligence to spiral out of control and to have the level of intelligence that we have, we basically need that type of environmental arms race. However, the Fujian people who are there, who are living a very simplistic life, they do not have those environmental conditions to have those types of arms races that can lead to those higher cognitive abilities. Hence why there is a massive gap in terms of the Darwinian explanation of the intelligence of these supposed savages. So anyway, I've given you the answer to this question, but Hamza, I want you to understand if she's already at the point of being close to Islam, don't focus on the arguments against you know this point or that point or this nuanced point about uh, the cognitive abilities of human beings and their evolution. Focus on why Islam is true and why we believe in God, why we believe the Quran is uh, the word of God. And then these questions, they should be parked because if a person already accepts this, then I've, alhamdulillah, seen this uh, many, many times that when you tell people, look, accept Islam, all the questions will be dealt with later, these types of questions, then those things are easier to deal with when the person is more in tune with the spiritual aspect of Islam and also gets more knowledge of Islam. Uh, Shaitan does this. Shaitan comes in and says, what about this? What about that? The brother who took Shahada with uh, hijab about three weeks ago, I've been liaising with him. And, you know, the other day he asked me again one of these questions and I said and I answered it. But I said, look, you need to focus on the foundations of Islam. Don't always just go and find the latest shubha when all of your previous shubhas have been answered and you already believe that the foundations of Islam is true. And I think you should elaborate a little bit on this point, because I think too many times people just get like this OCD of going from one question to another rather than um, sticking to why Islam is true. I, I think that's uh, you perfectly summarized. I don't know how I can add to it. Uh, I think uh, unless Hamza has any any follow up questions. So no, it's, I don't want to take up too much of your time. You have too many guys waiting. So basically, so the reason why she keeps asking is because so she's in medical school as well, and she's going to psychiatry. So you know, psychiatrists they they ask a lot of questions and they say why this, why that. So she came to the masjid with me once, and uh, she wore the dubatta, like the scarf and everything. Mashallah. Uh, yeah. So she's like close, but at the same time, she pokes here and there. Right, so so inshallah, one of these days when you guys have this uh, stream on, I'll ask her to come on as well. Why don't we do this, brother? Um, so in the private, uh, you, do you know my email, Darwinian Delusions at gmail.com? Yeah, yeah. So this is something I was thinking about doing anyway, but we'll start with you, inshallah. I'm gonna give you the link to next week's uh, uh, live, and then you, if you can ask her to come on, she can switch off the camera, we can have a chat, inshallah. Okay. And the other thing is for anybody watching. We're going to ask you to please email us if there's atheists who are interested, because afterwards some atheists say, how come I, there's no atheists in the chat? You're only talking to, you know, like we want to talk to atheists. We want to talk to non-Muslims. We want to talk to people who are close to Islam and even people who are against Islam, because that's essentially what the Dawah is about. So inshallah, yeah. we can give you that link and you can ask her to come next week, inshallah. 100%. So I should, uh, I should just email you. On the, yes. Uh, okay. And I'll give you the link to next week's uh, live, inshallah. Okay, okay, awesome. All right, thank you so much, guys. Jazakallah khair.